Today on Spirits and Gear, I review the Apollo Twin Interface from Universal Audio. I have been spending some time as of late with the Universal Audio Apollo Twin Duo interface and it is much more than just an interface. To call it an interface is kind of selling it short because when you get something from Universal Audio, you really, you're becoming a part of the Universal Audio community and the architecture. And I think that's a really cool thing and it's really unique to Universal Audio. Starting with the controls up front, I like the simplicity of the interface itself. It's clean, it's sturdy, it's not plastic, it is metal, and I like how you can toggle between the different modes right from the front panel. Everything is right at your fingertips. You do not need the included software that we're about to talk about in just a second to operate the Apollo Twin Duo. I think that's a little, uh, it's a misconception that, you know, if you want to take it out of the box and plug into it and use it as a traditional interface, you absolutely can. However, if you choose to download the Universal Audio console software to control it, you will open up a huge world of tonal possibilities. In addition to the hi z instrument input on the front and the headphone jack on the front panel, you also get a couple of XLR inputs on the back as well as two monitor outs and uh, a second pair of outputs that you can assign and really use however you'd wish. This interface is a Thunderbolt interface, so you will need to buy a cable because most most Thunderbolt interfaces uh, do not come with a Thunderbolt cable because how are they supposed to know how long you need it? And that's expensive, and why would they add that? So opening up the console software, you have a pair of inputs. In this case, since it's the Apollo Twin, you have two inputs, two analog tracks, and then you have a bunch of virtual tracks that you can assign tracks to, buses, things like that. So in this case, I would not have anything on the actual tracks, on the analog tracks, but then I would put, for example, a Fender combo on one of the virtual tracks and I would use that to monitor, but what I would be recording in my DAW, in this case Logic, would be just the DI. So I could then go back and then use the DI and put some plugins on that in my DAW if I wanted to. And the cool thing about that is it is not using any more processing power because with the Universal Audio stuff, even if I put a Universal Audio plugin within Logic on the track, it is using the DSP processing power from the Apollo, not the computer. And it's, it's latency free and is freeing up all that extra juice for your computer to use for other things like, you know, processing audio. So enough of the talking, let's get to some of the playthrough stuff. And I'm just going to quickly kind of play through some tones. Uh, you're going to hear a Friedman Dirty Shirley, you're going to hear a Friedman BE100, and then you're going to hear the, the new Fender uh, combo, which is amazing. Like they did such a good job on the tiny Fender combo tones and the amount of mics that you can put on and things like that. Really, really enjoyed the clean tones, especially with my Strat. Let's get to some audio, shall we?
My closing thoughts with the Apollo Twin Duo is that even if you're not ready to dive in to the vast world of tones and plugins and processing power, at its core, the universal audio stuff is still universal audio. It's the highest quality stuff that you can get. And the fit and finish, the feel, the tactile sensation of the knob, everything reeks quality. And that is something that I think all of us desire in all of our stuff. You've been wonderful. I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.